Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hotland Mode and today on Hotland Mode we are coming to you with the Independent Spirit Awards 2021 red carpet. Now I know we just did the Oscars but there were some looks from the Independent Spirit Awards that I really wanted to look at, talk about and discuss and this video is kind of short, it's only like 16 or 17 looks which whew, good to hear. Honestly, I couldn't not discuss it. There's one look that we will discuss later that I just was like, this is so good. I have to, she has to be acknowledged. So without further ado, me and my Arturo Obagero look are going to get right into this review. First up is Alan Kim. I'm obsessed with this young man. I just genuinely love to see him in Tom Brown. It's like a beautiful brand placement. And again, every time that he wears Tom Brown, the outfit is worth more than the amount that's sitting in my savings account. But I must say, I think it's a nice little casual take on Tom Brown. I think the little polo shirt is cute. Again, it's this sort of reference back to corporate wear, Americana, but like very drab and like depressing and like sad, which at the same time then is like twisted and turned on the runway but here it's just more sort of wearable tom brown this cardigan in what i'm gonna say is a navy blue but it could be a black i'm not really sure but it has the four white stripes across the sleeve to signify it is tom brown i love the pants very sweet very neat very petite and the little white sneakers in reality i don't think it's some like serve but i feel like alan kim goes for like a serve a child serving it's the kids menu when he does a red carpet red carpet so here i like this sort of casual kid moment again like a nine-year-old ten-year-old does doesn't have to be dressed up in a tuxedo every single day. So like this is nice sort of Oshkosh bagosh, but posh. Next up is Amit Rahab and he is wearing Dior Men by Kim Jones. I believe this is like the pre-fall collection. It was a collaboration with an artist and there's so many Kim Jones Dior artist collaborations now that I can't really remember which one is which. And so apologies, but also like not really that sorry. I do like the jacket. I like that there's a belt on it. And I know normally I'm like, no, no belts, Dior. But I think it's a little bit different when it's a man. There is this sort of like cinching of the waist, which the jacket should cinch its own waist. Don't get it wrong. That's what I so firmly believe. But I do think the fact that they're incorporating that artist belt, so it's like some sort of artistic interpretation on the belt and on the side, you can see it. That's sort of why that's being brought in there. I do like the fact that there's a bit of like a cinch in the blazer. I don't think it's a terrible thing to see. You have some sort of like scarf underneath, which I think adds a little bit of a nice element. A wide leg white pant. Here's my thing. I feel like there's a little bit of a disconnect. I wish we had sort of incorporated some sort of colors from the little scarf, or we had just kept it a black or navy blue pant, or maybe we incorporated yellow or purple, like what's going on on the belt. And then you have a sort of like white sneaker shoe and it has like the cartoons on it. And no, it's definitely more the Disney store than it is Dior, which is depressing. Honestly, there are elements of this that I do actually really enjoy. I think from the top up, I'm sort of like, yeah. And then from the bottom down, I'm like, why? Why, 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 why? So if we could, I don't know, condense and make the look concise, I think this would have actually been incredibly good. And I'm not opposed to seeing good Dior men looks on the red carpet. I'm not. Next up is Annie Murphy and she is wearing Dior. I don't know where this is from. I'm not planning on finding where it's from because wherever it's from, it is probably a very cursed place. We haven't used enough tarot cards in a Maria Grazia collection to like ward away the evil that is this. It's so bad. It's like the Technicolor dress, but not cute and without biblical connotations. And honestly, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'd rather there be some sort of biblical connotation to this dress. So it's like a yellow bodice moment going on there. And then like the multicolor sleeves in blue and red and green and pink and purple and green. At least the cuffs match each other, I guess. And then the skirt is just full of horrid colors, horrid prints, horrid motif. It's just, that's bad. I don't know how this was approved. I genuinely do not know how this was approved. If she's not wearing Christian Dior or Couture, that's fine. I don't think that's a bad thing. I do genuinely think that I can find a few nice Dior looks in every collection, a few. Don't get, you know, don't, don't get ahead of yourself there. But this is not one of them and I don't understand what was the notion. I love Annie Murphy, 
but Lexus from Schitt's Creek dresses better. And that's a really troubling sentence that I'm saying out loud right now. I don't know why we didn't go for like cool boho sort of chic, like that to me plays into a Lexus from Schitt's Creek. This is not chic, maybe it's boho to some people. It's an oh no to me. And there's no chicness there whatsoever. So I would have liked to see more of like a bohemian sort of style. And there are a lot of bohemian Christian Dior looks. So this is just, this is like really perplexing to me. I'm not even angry about it. I'm just like, what's happening here? What are we doing? What was the reason? I just, I don't understand it whatsoever. I just don't. I'm disassociating from Dior. Next up is Bianca Lawson and she's wearing Stephen Khalil. Now it's your sort of run of the mill pink layered tulle dress. So it has a deep plunging neckline, which is okay. I can see that little bit of like mesh that holds it together, which I hate to see. I just, it's so annoying. I'm being annoying about it, but like tea dye, tea dye, tea dye. Do it, you can match it. I know, I, I, I know it can be matched. The little tulle ruffles on the shoulders are not the worst things in the entire world. Like I'm not happy about them, but I also think that they do coincide with the layers of the skirt. So like, I see where it's going. The black belt, listen, if you're a black belt in karate, good for you. So happy, live your best life. If you're a black belt on a drop waist pink tulle dress, not happy for you, don't live your life. I don't understand what you're doing there. It's just very confusing. I presume that what it's trying to do is help to sort of create a shape at the waist or draw your eye to the waist. Sometimes drawing your eye to the waist is great. This is not one of those times. It's just super strange. It's super out of the box and not in a good way. It just doesn't make any logical sense, nor does it do the job of helping to create a waist. When you have the drop waist moment, I'm not really super duper mad about it. I think actually had you not had the belt sort of cutting it off, it could have played itself off a little bit different from the usual sort of tool messes that come out. And then, you know, I think the tool layered skirt, it's not the worst thing in the entire world. I do wish that it was more streamlined because as you go from the hip down to around the knee, you can see that there's a jutting out of the tool. It's either the way that it's falling, the way that it was placed. It almost like creates a hourglass shape in the skirt which I don't really know if that's what you want to do, if that makes sense. But honestly, if we had cut that part, I actually wouldn't have hated the skirt all that much. Overall, it's not good at all. I think there are a lot of elements that were added that were very, very unnecessary. And I think that kills a look. Again, editing. Learn how to edit, okay? It's just proofread. Proofreading is so important. Please do it, designers, please. I know I look incredibly different, but I did forget to discuss Carrie Mulligan's look. So we're coming in looking like a hot mess, but Carrie Mulligan was wearing Prada. Now this Prada look is an oversized sort of suit. It's in, I would say like a darkish green. It doesn't get into like blue territory. It feels more of like a very dark green to me. Now it has a white button down shirt underneath, no tie, and it has an oversized sort of baggy wide leg pant. And you can see there's some sort of like gray backing behind it, or there's some sort of like inner stripe. I don't know if that's really like a Raph Simmons Prada-y reference to his days at Calvin Klein when he brought back like the side stripe pants when it was like Cowboy Central, but I actually don't really mind the pants. I kind of wish though that the shirt and the gray of the pants intersected. I just feel like that would have played it together a lot stronger. Whereas I think when you have the white and the gray and the black of this like Prada belt, it sort of throws itself all into like a weird little loop. So I actually love the fit. I know I'm not a big fan of the belts. I'm not, but I do understand where the belt is coming in to like try and cinch the waist, but also like Prada tailoring, Raph Simmons, menswear. We shouldn't really need a belt, but I feel like Prada is also trying to like sell this belt from their spring 2021 women's wear collection. So I understand why they're doing it. I'm not saying that I think it works here. I do wish that it was just a beautifully impeccably tailored suit or the belt was like actually embedded into the suit jacket. Like if it actually had pant loops, you know, belt loops in it that the belt went through, I'd be like, oh, that's playing in more. But here you can see that it's really just like a cinched belt on a suit. It doesn't work with the white, it doesn't work with the gray of the pants. So I wish that there was a bit more of cohesion going on between like the accent colors because that's 100% throwing me off, unfortunately. But I like where it's going, but it hasn't gotten there 
Yeah. Next up is Coleman Domingo, and he is wearing Louis Vuitton. Now, you can see the sort of bright orange blazer and bright orange button-down shirt, which I feel like is fun. And from the Oscars, I've come to realize Coleman Domingo likes bright color, which I think is really, really great. And if you can pull off bright color, good for you. I obviously cannot. But I do love the element of the little checkerboard pant. And in reality, it's a really fun nod back to Louis Vuitton, whether it's the Damier trunk, which was developed by Louis Vuitton's son, George. I think it was George. Or maybe it was developed by Louis himself. I'm not really sure off the top of my head. I think it was maybe Louis. Whichever Vuitton developed it, they developed it because they didn't want people to steal the trunk style. So that's how you got the damier and damier in French means checkerboard. So you can see the sort of damier being played on in black and white here. And then at certain parts, it's sort of definitely cut up. So at the waist, it sort of is warped. And then you come to sort of like right above the thigh and it's sort of warped. If you come to right above the knee, you can see that it's also partially warped. And then maybe to like the shin, it's warped too. And then there's like a side split hem, which I don't really get, but like, okay. I do think the playing on the damier is cool. I'm not really super duper mad about it. And I think when you insert elements of Vuitton history. It definitely helps me get my bearings a little bit more. I do wish maybe the shoe had also matched the jacket and the shirt, because I think there should be some sort of elements that are coming together here. But I do think that the playing on a bright color and a black and white sort of motif that is signature to the house isn't bad. I think it works for Coleman Domingo. I think that it's a good way for Virgil Abloh to sort of do his little red carpet moments. Yeah, it's fine. Next up is Dominique Fishbach and she is wearing Tony Ward. Now, I actually like this color. It's like this beautiful sort of baby Cinderella blue. She's wearing just a strapless sort of ball gown or no, it's a bralette and high-waisted skirt. And you can see that the skirt has these sort of swags of fabric come all the way down, sort of make it a little bit different, make it not just your run-of-the-mill ball gown skirt. And then she has matching gloves, which I also quite enjoy. I think it's good to incorporate a glove. CC Carrie Mulligan at the Oscars. Honestly, it's not really exciting. It's not really revolutionary, but I think at the same time, if this is just going for sort of being pretty gorgeous, stunning, you know, that sort of moment, it's fine. I don't really know much about Tony Ward, so I can't really incorporate a lot of like design elements that I've seen before. It's not fitted badly, or at least I can't tell that it's fitted badly. The color works and plays on princessy tropes. Yeah, it's, it's there. Next up is Elle Fanning. And I am standing Elle Fanning wearing custom Vivian Westwood. Now, this is really the only reason I'm gonna say that I wanted to do this video is because this Vivian Westwood look is so good that I couldn't not talk about it. As you can see, there is light pink or metallic-y sort of pinkish purple corset going on, which is very Vivian Westwood. She's inspired by 18th century dress for quite some time. You can see it in so much of her like 80s and 90s work probably more late 80s, early 90s. But you can also see these little strings of pearls that are sort of little off the shoulder straps, which for legitimate reasons, I don't think probably would be very helpful in keeping the dress afloat. But in this moment, I'm not really mad about it because it has actual significance. Not only is Vivian Westwood known for her pearls, I mean, you have not seen the pearl chokers recently. I was gonna say good for you, but I actually like the pearl chokers. So like, I'm not mad about it. I think they're cute. And like anybody that was shitting on them, vaffanculo, you're boring. They also play into not only Vivian Westwood's history and popular products, but Catherine the Great, who Elle Fanning played in The Great, loved to wear pearls. So I thought that was a really nice sort of nod to historical elements and always sort of allows you to be a little bit more lenient with a look because there's some sort of fun thought through play not only on the celebrity but also on the character that the celebrity is going up for an award for which more people should do i i don't understand that it's so confusing to me how much that is not done because it really should be done a lot more. But I love the fit of the corset. I think it's really, really sweet. I think it's really, really fun. And then the sort of wrapped skirt, it's sort of gathered and pulled. I don't hate it. I think I'm, I'm really loving the top. And so the skirt I'm letting go. And also just the way the light reflects off of that fabric, it's divine. It, it like, it is so beautiful. It is so stunning. I can't stop looking at it. I think this is just like gorgeous. I think it's taking that sort of 18th century style and sort of bringing it more into a modern iteration, which Westwood has always done, but 
Here, I just think it's really cool. I think it's really, really lovely. I think corsets are back in people. Honestly, I love seeing this. I was so happy to see it. I think she just looks stun, stun. Done. Next up is Emerald Fennel, and she is wearing 16 Arlington. That is a young British brand, or it's a brand based in London, I'm pretty positive. So you have an off the shoulder black gown, and then it has a feather sort of trim at the waist, and then a sort of little feather trim at the sleeve. I'm not really mad about this. I genuinely think that it's kind of fun. I also know that Emerald Fennel is pregnant, so I feel that any sort of attention drawn to the waist is fun and funky and cool. And especially if you're pregnant, I feel like some people wouldn't want to draw attention to that, but I love a baby bump. I think it's like a beautiful thing to play on as a designer and you only get that iteration for nine months. So if you're willing to go for it, I love to see it. And it's also just like a natural part of life for some women. So why not just let it happen, let it rock? like play on that silhouette. The look also to me is a little bit like Yves Saint Laurent. -y. There's a very iconic Yves Saint Laurent look that's like all sheer black. And then at the waist, it has this sort of feather trim. To me, it's also a play on this iconic Yves Saint Laurent look. There is an Yves Saint Laurent look, I'm gonna say from like the late 60s. It was sheer and then had a sort of black feather trim at the waist, which is really, really fun. I think it's nice to do it also a bit with the one sleeve. I'm not really upset about this. I think it's quite sweet, quite cool. Nice nod, not a post. Next up, again, forgot this look. Julia Garner wearing Prada. Now this is actually a kind of interesting look, I have to say. When you look at it, you can see the sort of embellishments all across the waist in almost like an empire waistline style. It's right underneath the bust, which sort of dates back to that what? early, early 19th century, like Bridgerton-esque style of the 1810s to like the 1820s. You also have embellishments along the neckline. It pipes the hem of the dress as well and also goes throughout the slit. So like it pipes the slit too. And then down the front of the dress, there actually is that embellishment sort of a little bit less densely, but it's there. So Prada is all about trying to modernize and sort of update embellishments to make them more sort of wearable and understandable. And you can see that in a majority of Prada collections, it happens just quite a lot. On top of that, the way that the sort of embellishments come down the front is also to me another reference to like a really subtle Mutra Prada-ism. A lot of the times Mutra Prada, whether it's utilizing color or cut or fabric or texture or embellishments, embroideries, she'll try to like focus on the front of a dress or a shirt or anything like that. And you can see it. We did it in a video that was about like Prada Spring 2001. It was from our archive video. And you can actually see that down the front, there's like the sort of pulling a fabric so that the fabric sort of ruffled in this gold brocade that went against the sort of blue brocade that was throughout the whole top. It does happen and I see where it's going. The feathers in it, I'm not super duper mad about and I actually like this gray color. I think it's quite sweet and pretty and really like subtle, but at the same time, it has a sort of like feminine nature to it. I don't know if that's what I think. And then on top of it, you have a sort of grayish tight that goes into a grayish heel and socks and heels is a sort of Prada-ism. Mutra Prada likes to put a sock and a chunky heel together. It's just sort of how she operates. So in reality, I'm not saying this is revolutionary. I'm not saying this is like amazing, wonderful, stupendous, but I don't think it's bad. I think it has a nice sort of chunk of Prada history in it. And overall, like it's a sweet sort of pretty dress. It's kind of weird. It's a little bit wacky and that I think is Prada to the umpteenth degree. Next up is Kate Mara and she is wearing Miu Miu. Now you can see that it's a sort of silky little collarless jacket. It's full of embellishments in a sort of lattice style and full of crystals and pearls. To me, it sort of is uh, reminiscent of the most recent Prada collection, although it's not like snow gear, but there is a lot of quilted styles in the most recent Prada collection. I couldn't find this online or if this is from a specific collection, I thought maybe it was custom, but I actually kind of like it. To me, it definitely reads Chanel-esque. I just think the cut of the jacket and then the skirt and sort of like the little pearls in it and the crystals is very Chanel-y to me. But at the same time, Miu Miu is a bit more like chic schoolgirl with embellishments. So it also reads Miu Miu as well. Honestly, I think it's nice. I don't think it's ridiculously over the top. I like actually seeing not like a full gown moment. I think it's like Alan Kim in a way where if it's not like a real red carpet, red carpet, you can sort of play 
and I think there's more room to sort of play, and I think this is a good example of that. You don't always have to wear a big, bold, over-the-top moment. You can do sort of chic and neat and petite and really, really lovely. I like the cut of the skirt. I think it's definitely 1960s, a little bit Mary Quant, sort of mini skirt-esque, which Mucha Prada loved to play on, and Miu Miu is sort of like her childhood name. So in that regard, it sort of all ties back in together. I like the sort of short hair as well. I think that's very, very sweet. I'm not saying that because I'm trying to bring up people's faces, but I do think it plays well into the rest of the look. And also you have those little brooches in there that sort of tie back all the pearl moments all together. Overall, I love this. I think it's really sweet. I think it's really simple. I don't think it does too much, but at the same time, it's very decadent, elegant, opulent. Next up is Maria Bakalova. Bakalova. I don't, I, I heard how to say it the other day and then I forgot. So, but also she's wearing Dolce & Gabbana. So like, Next up is Melissa Villasenor, and she is wearing Gabriella Hurst, which I kind of love. I think Gabriella Hurst is a bit like the row in a way. It's just sort of like American classic stuff. It's not trying to be too much. It's not trying to go over the top. It's not trying to be like highfalutin designer, which listen, I love a highfalutin designer, but she keeps it simple. So you have a sort of white silk dress. There's sort of a pushed up sleeve, which I just wish the sleeve was a little bit more streamlined. You have some sort of shoulder pad and it looks like it's taking that sort of, I'm gonna call it a piercing. That's what I will call it, because it looks like a pierced nose to me. It's the piercing on the shoulder sort of creates shape there. And then you also have this cutout in the middle and then it's sort of put back together by these little piercings. I think it refers to a little bit of like a hard and soft with Gabriella Hearst. There is a lot of sort of flowy, you know, very elegant, very sort of like wearable styles. And then sometimes she'll just add in a little something something to shock you just a little bit. And I feel like that's this sort of moment going on. And I'd like to see more Gabriella Hearst on the red carpet in the future because I feel like it's a pretty easy brand to get your head around. It's just nice materials and nice clothing, which is just very American. So yeah, I don't hate it. I'm not dying over it, but I don't hate it. It's cute. Next up is Renee Zellweger and she's wearing Alexandre Vautier. And it's just a sort of strapless jumpsuit style. It's definitely very 80s, which is, you know, very Vautier. It's very sort of like MC Hammer, like harem pant, but like in reflective colors, which again is sort of like MC Hammer harem pant. So here that's sort of why you're seeing this sort of bulkier pelvis area and then a sort of tapered down pant and it sort of just comes right down. You can see the sort of strapless moment. To me, that sort of represents this like differentiation of the 80s. Women were no longer being sort of forced to be at home. They're sort of taking themselves out to their jobs and like it's it's a moment. And so at the same time, you have this sort of strapless style, which is definitely reminiscent of like ball gowny sort of culture and like debutantes and stuff like that. But then at the same time, it's like a pant. So it's a little bit more powered, a little bit more chic, a little bit more, you know, that. You can also see a cutout at the back and some sort of silver crystally rose, which to me is sort of that like Vautier sparkle that is definitely seen quite a bit. Again, nothing crazy, but I do enjoy seeing something that's a little bit not of the norm. You don't have to do a gown. So when you don't have to do a gown because you're at home, you can sort of play on a lot of those styles more. And even if you're not at home, even if you are on a red carpet, like play, do, be exciting. You don't always have to be like big gown. So this, I'm not mad at, I think it's fun-ish, you know, different. I'll take it. Next up is Riz Ahmed and he's wearing Gucci. Listen, uh, Riz, we need something. We need to do something. Listen, you are not wearing a boring style. There's definitely elements, the red and the green of Gucci with the white sort of moment all ties together to like the Gucci red and green stripe. So I'm seeing that, I'm understanding that. The shirt underneath has like branches and leaves and stuff, which to me is maybe a reference back to the white and floral flora scarf motif that was made famous by Princess Grace Kelly. So like I'm seeing it. And then you have a little bit of a black leather shoe. Overall, I definitely get like this is Gucci and it's not super duper Alessandro Michele over the top crazy in your face, but like for one, I would like Riz Ahmed to do super duper crazy over the top in your face. Like just once, that would be fun. I would really enjoy that. If we could make that happen, beautiful. Let's do it next time, come on. Next up is Shira Haas and she is wearing Miu Miu. And now it's just a sort of sweetheart neckline dress. It's gathered right at the waist and it has sort of yellow floral motifs or yellow floral embroideries in that are little silver baubles that are there. I feel like they look like roses. Overall, it's a bit boring. Shira Haas, I, I do love, but I feel like lately she's just really been slacking, which is so disappointing because I want her to like pull it out. Give us a moment, do something super crazy over the top, ridiculous. And I feel like we just never really get that. And so 
This to me is just like day dress, which fine. Everything that I've just said about doing not a big old gown is there, but at the same time, I wasn't exactly saying wear a day dress either. So yeah, Shira Haas needs to step it up dot com. Next up is Talia Ryder and she's wearing Saint Laurent. Now this is from, I believe the spring 2021 collection or maybe it's from like Cruise or maybe it's from Prefall. I don't really know anymore, but it's a black blazer that I'm sure has a little short underneath it, a sort of white flower on the lapel and some sort of, you know, little low croppy top and a sort of thick old chunky sandal heel. Not crazy, not over the top, not really doing all that much. It's sort of like I could wear a blazer with no pants or not visible pants and like a heel and would everybody say I look great? No, so like that's how I feel about this. I think there are better Saint Laurent looks to like have fished out of the lookbooks. It's just there could have been more excitement, there could have been more plays, there could have been like a nice little nod back to Monsieur Saint Laurent. It's just not exciting, it's not really interesting, it's not meh. Although, again, credit that it's not a gown, but a blazer over non-visible clothing is also not exciting or exhilarating, so. Finally, we have Viola Davis in custom Loewe. Thank you. Thank you, Viola. I love this. It's super fun. It's super different. It's super wacky. It's super crazy. It's super out there. But at the same time, it's pretty like refined. It's a nice sort of skirt suit moment. So you have a sort of basis of black. There's a black sort of blazer and a black sort of asymmetrical skirt. To me, it's just nice sort of fitted styles of, you know, a simple sort of Jonathan Anderson Loewe moment. But you have the skirt which is sort of asymmetrical and sort of plays into the kooky, crazy over the top sort of weird Loewe. But you also then have this sort of red and yellow and blue breakage motifs or like jagged motifs all throughout, which I think is really fun. I don't really understand the significance of it at all, but I don't care because I like the print. I think it looks really fun. I think it's different. It's not like flowers embroidered on a suit. It's not, I don't know, polka dots. It's not anything boring. It seems weird. It seems a little bit referential of like art. It seems a little bit kooky London sort of up and coming cool designer, which I know Jonathan Anderson isn't like up and coming, but to me it gives that sort of vibe. But Honestly, I think it fits her really, really lovely. I love that she took a risk with it. I think it's great in that regard. I'm so happy to see this on Viola. Chef's kiss, beautiful. So that is the end of the video, but before we end it, let's talk about the best and worst looks of this Spirit Awards 2021. I think best, this is hard. I'm giving it a tie. Elle Fanning, Vivian Westwood, and Viola Davis in Loewe. Like I can't really decide because they're so different, but at the same time, they're both so good. And normally I don't do like a double best, but I love them both. I think they're really fun. I think they're really out of the box. Beautiful. Worst, worst. Oh yeah. Listen, Maria Bakalova is only saved in Dolce & Gabbana because Annie Murphy's Dior dress is just an abomination. It should not exist. It is a nightmare. It is disturbing. It It's just, I can't believe that that happened. I'm almost like, again, I'm disassociating from Dior. So with that, that is the end of the video. I will see you guys in the next one and TTYL.